to rough shape giant objects using thousands of tons of pressure as deftly as a jeweler uses a pair of tweezers. Large pieces can be pressed in giant hydraulic forging presses, and in several crushing squeezes, they become virtually completed structures, practically ready for assembly. Perhaps the most amazing way to work aluminum is the method of extrusion, in which an ingot is forced through a die by a piston with... At the other end of the cylinder, the aluminum emerges in exact conformity with the shape of the die. In practically any cross-section the designer may specify, extruded shapes can be made in one-piece cross-sections impossible to form any other way. boats take passengers too. They tell me it makes a wonderful vacation. Adam, stick to the point. Hmm? Uh, oh yeah. Well bauxite isn't pure the way it comes from the ground, so it has to go through the refinery. Before you melt it? Well bauxite doesn't melt, no matter how much heat you apply, so we have to put it through another process, a washing process. <laughs> Naturally there's a lot more to it, but in the end we have aluminum hydrate in suspension. After the liquid is drained from it, we collect it and dehydrate it completely in huge kills which are constantly rotating. Flames shoot through from one end to the other, driving away the remaining moisture. And what is left is a fine white powder that's no longer bauxite, but a new, simpler compound called alumina, pure aluminum oxide. Does that melt? No, but it does something else. Now let's go back to that cryolite. Yes, at least that melts. And the molten cryolite dissolves alumina, exactly as water dissolves sugar or salt. So far as you can tell by looking at the solution, it's still just molten cryolite. But if you could see inside, you'd see the aluminum oxide breaking up, aluminum falling to the bottom of the pot, while the oxygen atoms burn away as carbon dioxide. Now this action eats away the carbon of the anodes at the rate of one pound of carbon anode for each pound of aluminum recovered. So naturally, we have to keep replacing the anodes pound for pound. But how do you get at the aluminum? We siphon it out of each reduction pot on a regular schedule every few days into a ladle lined with fire brick. And as the aluminum is recovered, we keep pouring more aluminum oxide into the cryolite to be dissolved and separated in the same way. Every aluminum reduction plant has row after row of such pots, and the process continues endlessly. The molten aluminum is cast into pigs or ingots, and there you are, one of the most obscure secrets of nature exposed and laid bare, a pure product of man's imagination. In this case, largely the well-directed imagination of a man called Charles Martin Hall. My, it must have taken a lifetime. On the contrary. Hall was only 22 years old when he reasoned out this process in 1886 and formed the company which became the standard bearer of a revolutionary new industry. Working out the recovery process was only the beginning. Aluminum still had to win its rightful place among the metals of the world. And hear this story or not. Of course, dear. Ooh, what are you going to do with all that nasty stuff? Now that stuff, as you call it, is almost pure carbon. And we're molding it into what we call anodes. We also use this carbon to line troughs, which we call pots. Well, it does look like you're finally beginning to make something. What's going into those pots? Well, that is crushed cryolite. 
Looks like gravel here, but in its natural state... Oh, it's pretty. You know, that would make a lovely pair of earrings. Oh, but I suppose it has aluminum in it. Uh, yeah, but that isn't important because we've never found a practical way to get the aluminum out of cryolite. Yet, cryolite has a very important function in the aluminum production process. Here you see all that electricity going to work. Huge amounts of current flow from the anodes to the carbon lining of the pot, heating and melting the cryolite. Now, perhaps you begin to understand why we build those big dams and generate so much electricity. Or, uh, or do you? I think that's very... Perhaps Adam may be forgiven for adopting a somewhat condescending attitude in revealing his latest project to Eve. Penny for your thoughts, Adam. Look out there, 700 pounds a piece. Only. Well, if they were iron, they'd weigh a ton. Well, who cares about a great big 2,000 pound block of something just because it weighs only 700 pounds? No, really. Confound it, woman. Look at this. Adam, who is that woman? What do you care? Look at her dress. It's made of aluminum lame. Mm, it is beautiful. And it's as light as silk. Aluminum is such a really reaching out into the future. Oh, you've been saying that since the creation. But what is it? It isn't very clear. Oh, of course not yet. But when it's fully realized, it'll be a better way of living. More beautiful, more durable, a lot less work, and a lot oh, less... Oh, I'm sure. But what's back of all this? A new lightweight metal, a friendly metal of infinite versatility, exciting new forms, textures, and colors. You mean a new element has been added? Oh, no. It's been there ever since the beginning, in a way. In a way? Yes. It was right at my feet when I first bent down and wondered what the Earth might be. Even thousands of years later, when we were living here. Oh, that heavy kettle. Well, Adam, where were those light metals in those days? Well, one of them was right at your feet. Well, why didn't you dig some up and make me a kettle I could carry? Confound it, woman. It wasn't that easy. I didn't know it was there then. Not even one... ...their voices. Think of them as the voices of Adam and Eve, the originals, last name unknown. To imagine otherwise would quite destroy the illusion. And the whole thing is just an illusion, a product of the imagination. But then, so are you. Don't be offended. So are we. Understand? Think how difficult it must have been in the beginning for Adam to understand anything at all. He could not realize where he was, or what he was, or for that matter, what anything was. In any case, the creation was finished, complete, seemed to be. Nothing remained to be done about that, so why bother to try? But something within Adam stirred, and a new situation became apparent, awakening Adam found that he had been given what has since been called a helpmate. A helpmate to help him do nothing? Preposterous. What Adam really was given was a starter. Being feminine, Eve probably started in a small way, perhaps as simply as, Adam, get up and move this rock. It'll look much better over there. Now, don't just lie around. Use your imagination and go to work. Of course, that was a long time ago, but it was a beginning. Adam soon caught the idea never to rest on his past achievements. Keep striving to devise new and better ways of doing things. Material. It has something special for everybody. First of all, it's lightweight and enduring. Ideal for irrigation pipe. And this is the Alcoa building in Pittsburgh. Thanks to aluminum, the lightest building of its size ever built. And its beauty is everlasting because the outside will always take care of itself. Together with aluminum, a lot of imagination went into its design and construction, as you would expect from a company founded on imagination. May I interrupt? No. 
It was strong, lightweight aluminum that made possible modern aircraft and enabled railroads to carry more people at higher speeds in more comfort and carry greater payload with less dead weight. Same thing goes for trucks and for everything that moves, down to those things that must be pushed by hand, like lawnmowers and baby strollers, like anything that has to be lifted either at work or at play. Adam, just a moment. Furthermore, aluminum resists corrosion, and that's why it's so good for anything that has to stay smooth and bright outdoors, and why it's used for the roofs and even the walls of the most up-to-date houses, not to mention window screens in almost any house, and highway signs that won't rust no matter what people do to them. Aluminum light poles and railings are easy to put up and keep up, Chain-link fencing shines for years and years without any care. Telephone booths are completely impervious to weather, never require painting. And when things do need painting, aluminum paint is next best to aluminum itself. As aluminum resists corrosion, it's used for outdoor industrial piping and tanks, electrical conduit, instrument lines, and in all kinds of marine applications, industrial and otherwise. But Adam, as a woman... As a woman, you'll want to know that aluminum is non-toxic and can be used for easy to clean pots and pans. And aluminum foil can be formed into cooking utensils that you just throw away and don't have to clean at all. Foods and drugs and candy can be packaged in it. And aluminum is also non-magnetic, which means a lot to the electronic and instrument industries. Aluminum won't make sparks, which is why you find it made into stairways and gratings around refineries and powder plants and other places where a spark could blow the place up. A pound of aluminum will carry twice as much electricity as a pound of copper. And so you'll find it not only in long transmission lines and towers, but also in bus bars in buildings and factories and in wiring of more and more kinds all at Eve, are you listening? Do I have a choice? Well, this should interest you. Aluminum is outstanding as a conductor of heat. That makes it ideal for radiant heating and cooling panels in offices and homes, for flat irons, refrigerators, and right down to even ice cream scoops that stay slippery just from the heat of your hand. Well, that certainly covers... Bio. On the other hand, aluminum is also an excellent reflector of heat, which is one reason why people paint with aluminum and use aluminum roofs on barns and other buildings to keep them cool, and why the reflectors in drying ovens are aluminum. And aluminum reflects light, too, so it's not only good for drying ovens, but also for flash guns, for the mirror surfaces of street lamps, for brighter TV pictures, to catch the invisible rays of radar. Adam, slow down. You're losing me. Um, is not only naturally beautiful, but it also responds to more beauty treatments than any other metal we've ever known, including buffing, stamping, embossing, engraving, etching, hammering, sandblasting, bright dipping, electroplating, porcelain enameling, and anodizing in all the free state, like gold, silver, copper and iron, I had to discover its very existence. Well, now at last you're doing something. Is that how you get that, what do you call it? Aluminum, the most widely adaptable metal of all time. You mean there's aluminum in that clay? Hmm, some. But right now we're building a dam. Why? To hold back a huge wall of water. To make aluminum from water? Of course not to make electricity. Electricity? Yes, electricity is the key to the whole production process. So first of all, we must create a big lake. Our dam acts as a stopper in the river, and so, having no place to go, the river rises until we have a wall of water as high as we need. High enough for what? High enough to come charging through those immense two thousands of horses. Horses? Horse per. Oh. Now, wherever you see those tubes, the titanic force of water has been harnessed and is... Running bust. back into the river. Well, yes. But on the way, turning mighty generators to produce electricity. And besides these hydroelectric plants, there are others, some powered by natural gas, others that burn coal. And today, even atomic energy is being explored. Just a minute. Dams and lakes, tubes, generators. When do you start making aluminum? Well, this is all part of it. Around any smelter plant, giant transmission lines, themselves made of aluminum, bring in the tremendous flow of electric current required. As a matter of fact, 
If we hadn't discovered how to utilize electricity in the production of aluminum, its cost would be prohibitive. I merely asked, when do you start making aluminum? That called for pioneering and education, proving to people the advantages and widely diversified usefulness of this material. As a result of their pioneering, almost all the development of properties and processes of aluminum and its alloys, as we know them today, can be attributed to this one company. Today, that same pioneering in progress continues on an ever-widening front. In research facilities across the country, men in this company are still exploring and revealing new avenues to a better way of life with aluminum. Of course. Well, now, you make aluminum sound very, very important. But can you prove it? Aha, uh -huh. I'm glad you asked that. Now, those are pigs of commercially pure aluminum. They and aluminum can be joined and fastened in every way we've ever found to fasten two pieces of metal together. And it can be wedded to plastics, steel, chromium, paper, and other materials. You can look for a world of aluminum in the wonderful world of tomorrow. How exciting, a solar power plant. Uh, yeah, of course, a solar power plant. How clever, harnessing the light from the sun to run things. Adam, you are wonderful. Yes, but why don't you act like you think oh, I... Oh, you're so funny, though. You make everything sound so complicated, like aluminum, for instance. As I see it, aluminum is procured by the electrolytic reduction of alumina in a cryolite bath confined in a chemically inert receptacle. That's all there is to it. What? Where? Now, just a minute here, Eve. And it does excite the imagination. I'll bet there are a lot of people using their imaginations about it right now. Good grief. What's that? Well, it's a flying boat. Anybody can see that. Looks like fun. Imagine that. An aluminum house, roof and walls and everything. Imagine that. You melt the cryolite and get nothing whatsoever. Then what? Oh, no, don't tell me you're building another dam. No, we're mining bauxite. Because bauxite, in its pure form, is the richest source of aluminum. There are huge deposits of bauxite scattered all over the earth. Now, this one happens to be in the American state of Arkansas. But we also get it from Suriname in South America and the Caribbean area and bring it to the refineries in the United States in a fleet of ore boats that shuttle back and forth all